Uh, the chair now recognizes the, uh, the ranking member of the Middle East subdivision, uh, subdivision uh, subcommittee, the chairman. You're not the ranking member, although it's good enough. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Sherman thinks you should be. Thank you very um, much, Mr. For Chairman. For five minutes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I thank the, uh, the witnesses uh, for being with us, especially Mr. Andrews, whose son Darren Dean was killed in Afghanistan in 2009, and Mr. Full and Mr. Waltz, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Andrews, I cannot imagine what it would feel like to lose a child in the service of our nation, but as a, as a stepmother of a U.S. Marine aviator who served in Iraq and a mother-in-law to another Marine aviator who served in both Iraq and Afghanistan, I know the sleepless nights and the constant worry that parents face when their child or loved ones are constantly in, in harm's way. Our country owes our brave men and women who have served and who have earned our gratitude a debt that can never be repaid, but it must start with being completely forthcoming with them. Uh, in late 2011, while I was chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, the administration gathered the chairman and the ranking members of the pertinent national security committees, as well as congressional leadership, to brief us on a potential prisoner swap of Taliban terrorists for Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. And although the meeting was classified, news reports from just earlier this month indicate that the administration had a team of officials from the National Security Council, Pentagon, State Department, CIA, Director of National Intelligence, uh, present the administration's plan to us. At the time of the briefing, using all available information given to me, I was adamantly opposed uh, to the proposed swap, said so at the meeting, as were many of our colleagues. My opinion has not changed as more information has been revealed. I oppose the swap not only because, not because I did not want to bring Bo home. It's important to have him home and out of the hands of the Taliban. I oppose the swap because a proposal would have resulted in a huge coup for the Taliban, would have benefited them, jeopardized the safety and security of our brave men and women in uniform, and compromised our national security interests. With so many of our colleagues expressing our disapproval of the swap, the administration seemed to have gotten the message and dropped its exchange plan, or so we thought. Then earlier this month, I, like the rest of my congressional colleagues and the American public, read the news that the administration had swapped five Taliban commanders for the sergeant. Despite its promises to notify Congress, not to mention its legal authority to do so, the administration kept the deal secret and acted unilaterally. The deal is precisely the reason for the legal mandate that Congress be given 30 days notice because the administration has a proven track record of overstepping and abusing its authority. As we've already seen, the Taliban used this to its benefit using the videotape of the exchange as propaganda and as a recruitment video, and it has only emboldened them further. Not only that, but despite the agreement with the government of Qatar, which by the way is only for one year, to supervise these five Taliban high-level operatives, there are no assurances that they won't be back in the fight in short order and orchestrating attacks from their lavish new headquarters in Doha. The fact that we are placing our hopes in Qatar a country that has been full-throated in its support for the Muslim Brotherhood, especially in Egypt, where Qatar's support for the Brotherhood actively worked against our interests in seeing a democratic transition there, will likely further uh, strain our already damaged ties with our traditional partners in the Gulf. They may, this may have serious implications for our national security objectives, especially as it relates to our efforts in Iran. But this swap is more than just Bo Bergdahl or the Taliban. It's about U.S. national security, the safety of our men and women in uniform, and it's about the administration's disregard for the law and the contempt it holds for its obligations to Congress. The administration's deal to swap five senior Taliban officials for the sergeant has far-reaching implications. Negotiating and ultimately forging a deal with Taliban terrorists is uh, unnecessarily endangers all of the servicemen and women who are operating in war zones right now that these five senior Taliban operatives are likely to rejoin the fight. And it also inspires the Taliban and other terrorist groups to conduct abductions of our armed forces personnel. As we have already seen one Taliban commander admit that the Taliban is now encouraged by the results of the Bergdahl trade. Then, of course, there are the questions of the legality 
of the administration's unilateral decision and the frustration level and lack of trust that Congress has with the administration as a result of this swap. There are many, many unanswered questions, Mr. Chairman. The administration still needs to answer, but for today, for today it's important that we have the opportunity to hear from some of the people uh, and, and how this decision has impacted them uh, personally, those who served in Afghanistan fighting side by side with their fellow soldier, those servicemen and women who may have placed, been placed even further in harm's way as a result of this exchange, and those who lost a loved one in Afghanistan, they deserve to be heard and they deserve the truth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time.